the first question that I'm going to address today is why there are so many Hindu gods. I say Hinduism for lack of a better word. I prefer to say Sanatana Dharma or the Vedic heritage of uh, life. So if you look at Sanatana Dharma, the idea is that Ishvara or that Supreme Consciousness is all pervasive, all pervasive in the sense that the God isn't a separate entity from what is manifest in the world. So there is no duality in, in that uh, philosophy. So it means that, um, let me try to explain this as, as I understand it in as simple short words as possible. Now if you took look at any object, right, like this sari, um, the floor, the door behind me, this necklace, earrings, any of these things that are there, when you break it down, they break down to just molecules and electrons and atoms. Now, if we put together molecules, electrons and atoms, can we make wood? Can we make a human being that has life? Can we make cloth or the floor or sand or or anything else for that matter, or a metal, we can't. We've tried that in scientists, have tried to see how these come together to create what they create, but we can't do that. We don't know how it, how it comes together to manifest into these many varied objects and creatures of this world. Therefore, we cannot say that there is no intelligence in this object like now in this sari itself the fabric forms a certain way because there are rules to the fabric there are rules to the cotton that is there and we as human beings scientists makers use these universal laws that are applicable like of electricity of how fabric works to make uh, computers to make the camera that i'm talking to to um, then digitally convert all these things. There are existing rules. Scientists study the rules that are existing in this universe as natural laws, right? Like gravity or electricity or um, anything else. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know all the rules. But there are so many things that exist. And we as humans make use of these rules, believing that they work at every point in time to make all these objects. And by objects, I mean everything, right? Including the fabric and the sari. I just keep using the sari because it's in front of me. Now, we cannot say that there is no intelligence inherent in these objects. I'm not just talking about living objects, but even anything in the world, from the floor to the fabric, um, trees, plants, flowers, butterflies, bees, human beings, animals, everything. There is not just intelligence within the minds of living things, but intelligence itself within the fabric of creation for the blood vessels to uh, be arranged the way they are arranged, for the nerves to be the way they are. So there is something that is intelligent that has, that is within this. The Dantic philosophy says that there is no distance between the creator and the creation. That means that this all-pervasive intelligence is what we term as Ishvara or God. Because I don't say God exactly because there are different perceptions of God, where God is a different entity who controls things or makes. Here in the Vedantic tradition, we believe that this pervasiveness is itself Ishvara or that Supreme Consciousness and we give it different names, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Devi, all of it. I mean, you can give it any name you want. So this pervasive consciousness that exists within everything is non-dualistic in nature because the same thing that's in you is in me, is in the floor, is in the, in the worm, in the earthworm that's there, in the moth in every single thing, right? So I know this is a um, difficult concept sometimes and hypothetically you can say that it's 
oh yes i understand it but in reality to make sense of that is is quite difficult right and there is the same intelligence that is pervasive for many reasons because there is a balance that exists with everything and there is a harmony that is there and there is a logic to this creation itself now it is not like a baker and bread where the baker makes the bread the baker is separate from the bread but it is like um uh, silver and this necklace because there this entire necklace forget the stones and the pearls right so let's say this was completely in silver silver can be this necklace silver is this earring if i had a ring silver would be the ring right so if i would say this is silver that would be right the ring is silver but silver is not just the ring the silver is also the necklace also the earring that's the comparison that they make often in the in the in the vedantic texts of um, either the clay and pots or gold and jewelry where it is the entire thing it's not separate from it now if you think about this idea and you think that in uh, sanatana dharma we think that every single thing is ishvara or brahman whatever you want to uh, call that uh, intelligent omnipresence uh, that is there everything can be made into divinity and that's what the culture does so we have a vana devata which is the god of the forest we can have a devata for fabric right and that wouldn't be wrong we we have bhu devi a goddess for mother earth the floor everything that is earth we have saraswati goddess of learning so all these ideas that are part of this supreme consciousness that are an extension of this we just give it different different forms and that's all it is so it's ultimately it's all the same thing so we're venerating the idea of learning the idea of knowledge in saraswati we're venerating um the bird the trees and the flowers and plants in the vana devata we're venerating um uh, the uh, the the fact that we do not want um Uh, we want to be successful in everything so the idea of success we are venerating through lord ganesha so there are different ideas and concepts that are there or wealth of any kind we we um we respect and that is lakshmi so these are personifications of the universal law that permeates everything in this world they are not gods and goddesses sitting somewhere that have thoughts on their own they are separate from these objects that they give us so lakshmi is not sitting there and deciding ah this person i'll give him so much wealth this person gets no money from me that's not how it works lakshmi itself is every wealth that exists the fact that we have wealth wealth of the mind wealth of the body all of this wealth is venerated in lakshmi now you decide whether all these gods and goddesses are relevant to every human being or not this is an inclusive idea it's not something that says that this is one idea and your idea is separate so if anyone goes to college or goes to school or respects learning they respect saraswati that's all it is if anyone values um the wealth that they have and either just money or if they value the fact that they have a healthy body they have a healthy mind uh if they value that they respect lakshmi that's all it is and for every other god there is something else if they respect uh, uh the earth and they are uh, environmentalists and activists who want to 
you know, preserve nature, then they respect Bhudevi. So this idea of gods and goddesses is, is relevant to everyone. It's not something that is, that the, so that's why I, I can't really say Hinduism because that is, that is not, because then you perceive it as a religion that excludes other ideologies, but it doesn't. It is uh, comprehensive, it is uh, Vedantic, it's Sanatana Dharma, and it includes every human being on the planet. So this is why we have so many gods and goddesses, and every person can add their own god and goddess and give it a form that they like or that they revere and respect. There is absolutely nothing right or wrong. Nobody is to say anything about it. If I, um, if I love dancing and I, I'm not particularly, the form of Nataraja doesn't work for me, I can make my own dancing goddess and see dance as that goddess because this, this, uh, this, um, this cosmic intelligence that allows my body to dance, that allows me to experience dance, I revere that and it's up to me to see him, her in whatever form, whatever gender that I feel right for me. So that's the idea of um, the thousands of gods that we have in India and uh, each of you is welcome to make your own. <laughs>